Good morning and welcome back. So glad you joined us today for DI Lives, an introduction to Katia on the 3D Experience platform. We invite you to stick around after today's presentation for a live Q&A. We'll get started momentarily. We're just waiting a couple minutes for others to join us. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Without further ado, I'll hand things over to Joel Cuisan, VP of Sales, and Tim Ramos, Application Engineer for CATIA at CATI. Hello everybody and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Tim Ramos and I am an Application Engineer at Inflow Technology. Today we're going to be going through 3D Experience, the CAD within it, and how you can integrate your CATIA V5 and also your SOLIDWORKS applications with 3D Experience. We're going to be going through this by going through a couple examples to show how this can be done. So first we're going to do an overview of the 3D Experience platform and some of the capabilities that are afforded to you. First we're going to log into our web apps, which is our web portal that allows us to get into our 3D Experience from a web browser. So we're going to log in as Mechanical Designer, and this is just showing how we can utilize our Inovia web apps to get to our CATIA apps within 3D Experience. I'm gonna to go to my project execution app and see what needs to get done for the day. So I'm gonna go over and look at my current tasks that I need to get done. I'm going to go over to my assembly symmetry task, go over to my deliverable. Then while checking the deliverable, it gives me a bunch of information. I can go in and check the part that I need the deliverable on and see all of its metadata. And right from here, I can go and select my assembly design app and it'll prompt to open this assembly right within my 3D experience. And we'll just wait for this to load up. This is installed locally on my machine. And here we have our front fork open and ready for us to go. So there are a couple ways first to open up your products. Uh, 3D Experience and CATIA in general is very good, has a very good core model, or especially when it comes to very large assemblies and products. So if you'd imagine, not only can you, if you're designing a car or even a motorcycle, you can design a part of that car, but also design the entire car. And not only that, you can also design the entire manufacturing plant that builds the car. 
And one of the ways that it helps to load up and work with all of these large assemblies is the fact that it loads it up in these very lightweight modes initially, and it loads it up more and more in depth as, you, as needed. So right now we're just looking at kind of a preview of our fork. This allows us to just go into the tree and kind of select different items that we want to open up in a more design dense environment. So here it's just going to kind of load up uh, all of our sub-assemblies here and we see it open up in this nifty little turntable here that actually if we go into more sub-assemblies each sub-assembly is going to be represented by a different turntable. So it makes it easier to pick out the specific sub-assembly or parts you want to work on. And then from there you just say right click and open the relevant items. And here we just have everything. An assembly because the first symmetry. thing that we want to do so what we want to do part is, is essentially we do an assembly symmetry. This brake right here, this front brake, and make it in and, min, and symmetrize it and make it into a clutch. Uh, first, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change all these into edit mode. We're in a non edit mode right now. And just so you know, this feature isn't out of the box. This is kind of something that I've been setting up with uh, some clients that I kind of gotten used to and like. Uh, what this helps you do is it sets another kind of barrier in between you and actually modifying a part that maybe you're not supposed to be modifying. Uh, in Katia specifically, uh, it, it, it's based off of parametric design, which is formula-based and uh, link-based. So what you can do is you can take links from, other, from certain parts, certain geometries, and do what's called a publication and uh, send out that data or copy and paste it into another part to live update as you update the part um, that links to it. So as you can imagine, if, uh, if you start getting into the weeds on that and creating a ton of links, you're going to start edit, you could possibly edit parts that you don't want to edit or that someone else has responsibility over. So this is just kind of an extra barrier between you and making those potential mistakes. So right now I'm just moving it from edit or from viewing mode into edit mode and I'm choosing the instance and the reference, so this allows us to any copy of the part and then the base geometry of the part, the one that controls the geometry. So I'm just going to switch say OK, and it's going to think for a second, and then we're going to go right into addition mode. So here what we want to do is, like I said, create a symmetry. Once we go over to, we're going to switch over to our assembly design app, and then choose our assembly symmetry icon. And here, what we want to do is we want to first select our sub-assembly that we want to symmetrize. And we could do that by clicking any part of our sub-assembly, holding down the shift key. And what we see happen is we get this little ladder here. And what this does is this allows us to uh, select our sub-assemblies all the way up into our major assembly. So now we only want the break assembly, so we're going to select that. And then we're going to go and select our symmetric plane. And we see in real time Katia pulls up a preview of what we want to symmetrize along with a legend over here based off of or that shows us what we're going to symmetrize. And I'll show you guys that a little bit right now. So if you'd imagine, uh, we don't want to recreate new parts for all these. These all don't need a mirrored or sim uh, symmetry geometry. We can reuse parts. So I'll showcase this here with this pin. So as, uh, if you're familiar with SolidWorks, you'll recognize kind of this context menu here. So based off of what app you're in and what you're selecting, it knows roughly what you want to do with your geometry or with your parts. So here we want to use our same reference. So we go over to our context menu and choose same reference. And we'll see that our pin is now green in accordance to same reference on our assembly, assembly symmetry command. And as you can imagine, we don't need a brake fluid reservoir on our clutch. So we want to get rid of this assembly. So once again, I'm going to select this, hold shift, and go up the tree until we get our proper sub-assembly. Go to our context menu, and then select no symmetry. And we see we get a ghost view. Then we're going to choose the same reference for some other parts that we don't need to create new parts for, such as this mirror. I'm going to choose same. These bolts. And then also this clip to the to the brake assembly or the clutch assembly. We're going to go and choose same reference. And what we're going to notice here is that when we uh, choose to not symmetrize this part and use the same reference, we get a weird kind of orientation. But 3D Experience compensates for that and allows us to choose 
different origins for the part and line it up correctly. So finally, with our symmetry here, we recognize that we don't want a brake master cylinder. We actually want a clutch master cylinder. So what's nice about this symmetry app is that not only can we choose parts to reuse or exclude completely, but we can also replace certain parts. So if I go down here to existing reference, we see that we get this little filter icon here. What this means is we now have the ability to go anywhere within our database and choose a part to replace it with. So what I'm going to do is showcase this, the, our search tool here and just search Clutch Master, looking for the Clutch Master Cylinder. Once again, we still see that we have this filter icon. So we can go ahead and this lets us know that once we click this part, Katia is going to think for a second and then integrate that part into our symmetrized geometry. And now we see existing reference there where it's supposed to be. And then now all we need to do to commit this command is just click off in a 3D space. As we see, we have this little check mark next to my, uh, next to my cursor. And we'll give it a second to think and generate all of this. And now keep in mind that if, for whatever reason, uh, as some of you might be thinking, like, what if I click in a 3D space accidentally and then commit to it? That's okay, because we can always just go right here and double click. And then we have our symmetry command back here that we can just edit. But I don't need to make any edits, so I'm just going to say cancel. So that's what we have for some assembly symmetry for you. We're going to revisit assembly design a little bit later in this demo. But for now, we're going to go and concentrate a little bit on part design. I'll show you some nice features that Katia has with part design, as well as some extra features that 3D Experience included in it. So what I'm going to do, we're going to look down at our caliper assembly or a caliper design and just right click on some of the part and choose center tree just to find it easier. And then just to note, a nice thing about Katia is you're, you have the full ability to design and work with this in the context of the rest of the assembly. So if I want to design and make sure that I'm not interfering anywhere or choosing anything weird or making any geometry that doesn't make sense, I can check it in real time as well as grab references. So say I wanted to clear these pins, I can grab the geometry of these pins and integrate it with publications and links into this part and show like, hey, we need to, we need to clear this geometry here. However, it's, we have all of our reference here in these wireframes. So what I'm going to do is just choose to right click and say open in a new app. And this will create a new tab. So now we're going to open up the brake caliper on this assembly and use it to show solid part design in 3D Experience. So first we're going to go and create a pad. By choosing our pad command and choosing a wireframe, we can set a length or distance on that pad. So 3D Experience has some enhanced capability that allows us to go and expedite our commands. So instead of going and choosing pad to create a pad, we can go and drop our robot onto a wireframe and drag it to create a pad. So next we'll use our union trim command. We can choose our body that we want to trim into our main body and also select the faces we want to remove. 3D Experience will calculate based off of which faces we choose, which related faces will also need to get removed. Next, we're going to go and create some fillets on this part. By selecting the edge and using our context commands, we can go and create a fillet. At the same time, we can also go down to our classic toolbar menu, choose a sharp edge, and create a fillet that way. Next, we're going to want to create a pocket. So similar to how we created a pad, using our context menu, we can just drag our robot, and because the wireframe is intersecting our solid, 3D Experience knows to create a pocket here instead of a pad. So next, we're going to show our sketching capabilities. So using the context commands and just choosing that plane, we can go and start a sketch. We're just going to throw two circles in there. And once again, using context commands, 
we're going to set relationships from our sketch to our solid body without having to bring that wireframe into our sketch. So here we'll choose diameter of 32 and then we'll see again by choosing the edge of the wireframe and the edge of the part we can set a concentric constraint. And then now we'll go to our classic method of creating a pocket by going down to our toolbar. And we'll go and reverse the direction, change the type to up to last, and make sure the direction is correct. Sometimes it can switch on us. And then select OK. So next we're going to want to set some drafts on this part. So by selecting our draft tool, we can select our faces that we want to set up for draft. Then select our neutral element and making sure our pulling direction is correct. We can select preview. Next, we want to complete the rest of the fillets on this part. And we could use our auto fillet command since they'll all be the same radius. We'll go, here we'll go select our functional faces or the faces that we don't want a fillet applied. Then we'll see that 3D Experience applies the fillets on the rest of the part. Next, we're going to place some holes on the part. And by using our repeater functionality, by double clicking on the hole command, we can go and set a hole. And we'll just set this one up to have a 12 mil diameter. By doing our repeater command, we can go and set a hole. And without having to go and reselect the hole command each time, we can simply go through and keep instantiating holes. So we know that some of these holes need a counterbore condition. So we can go and set that directly within the hole command. And then updating the part to see our results. We can then instantiate that counterbore on the rest of the holes using a command that's very similar to the one that you see in Microsoft uh, applications. And this is our semantic painter. So it recognizes the counterbore condition and then also will highlight all the holes that can also accept that counterbore condition. And then quickly reviewing the part, we can check our drafting directions, or we can check our die condition to make sure that the part will exit our die sufficiently. And we could also do a wall thickness analysis to make sure and protect it for short shots and other manufacturing issues. We also have the ability to run a section through this part to hone in on specific areas. Next, we're going to take a look at surface design within 3D Experience by developing this front fender. So after opening our part, we'll make sure we go to the Generative Shape Design app to develop our surfaces. Similar to our part design, we can also use our context commands to develop easy geometry. Here we created a revolve just by using a wireframe and an axis. We can create an extrude by dragging the wireframe or holding control to drag the wireframe equally in both directions. In our context menu, we can choose a trim command, as well as instantiate a fillet. Now here we're just going to go and adjust our view so we can see a better definition of the part. And then now we're going to go in and edit our fillet. We want to change our constant fillet to a variable fillet. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add an extra point on there.
set our endpoint condition so we can fully define this variable fillet. And then conditions are going to be 10 mils, the middle one's going to be 50. And selecting OK, we can see that geometry created. So next we're going to extrude out this green wireframe here. This is going to be a trim or a split surface that we're going to use later on. But we're going to extrude it now just to have it. And at the same time, we're also going to go and extrude a shape that we want to trim into our main shape here. And we'll just go and extrude it out using our context menu. Using our context menu to trim. And we'll hide this object real quick. And then apply a fillet there. Then now we're going to go and unhide that shape that we made earlier. And we'll use it to split our part. So we're going to go and create another split operation just to get the final geometry of our part down. Then now that we have one half of the part, we're going to symmetrize it to get the other half. And we'll choose our plane directly from our command. I'm choosing our YZ plane. We'll symmetrize that part. And then using our context menu, we're going to join it together. And we'll hide all of our wireframe geometry that we don't need anymore. And then go back to our main assembly to view that it's finalized. And now finally for 3D experience, we're going to take a look at some assembly design. So here we're going to insert an existing product into our assembly. So by switching insert existing, we get a little filter icon that allows us to search our database. And by selecting those search results, it'll automatically insert those search results into our design. Then we're going to use our robot tool to move our part. The 3D experience doesn't have constraints. They have what's called engineering connections. What engineering connections do is it's the same thing as constraints, but it takes a set of more variables and calculates them out based on the degrees of freedom. So you can create a mechanical simulation or kinetic mechanism after the fact. And we're going to show you how to set that up now. So by defining axis based as our engineering uh, connection, we can go and set one axis of one assembly in reference to the axis of another assembly. So now we'll go and set the limits in which the two axis systems will relate to each other angle-wise. So we'll set the lower limit is 0 degrees, and then the upper limit at 900 degrees. We'll select OK. Then we'll see the engineering connection shown once we go and update the top level of our assembly. So now that we have our engineering connection set, we can go into our mechanism and put that connection into our joints. So we see that 3D experience recognizes that we have an extra angle there for our degree of freedom, and that that'll drive the relationship between the assemblies. And going into our commands inside of our mechanism, we have the ability to go and manipulate this relation. And then finally, when we go to save the part, we can go into save with options, and this gives us an entire view of our save scope. So within this window, we get fil colored filters on our parts that show us whether it's new, modified, or will not be modified, or aka will not be in the save scope. So next we're going to talk about working with 3D Experience and Katia V5, the predecessor to 3D Experience. 
So the way in which 3D Experience allows you to work with Katia V5 is that 3D Experience is still used as your business process platform as well as your PLM and PDM, but your Katia V5 is now a separate specific CAD authoring tool that allows you to in real time communicate with 3D Experience and update your geometry as well as your metadata and connections and you know everything else that 3D Experience stores for all your data. It's just that Katia V5 is now housing the CAD design portion of it. We're going to look at how Katia V5 works in conjunction with 3D Experience by taking a look at a change action order that has been placed in our 3D Experience platform against the assembly of a nose of an aircraft. And the change, the change action is basically we need to replace a bracket with a different one. So here we're opening up our assembly in our web apps, and we're going to go and filter out this assembly for certain configurations. We want to look at the B configuration, so we're going to take a look at that and load it up real quick. We just go to projected view, select B for our configuration, unselect Q, select OK, select OK again, say apply. And then now that configuration is applied to our viewing panels. And here we can see the item that needs to get changed. We go down to our change action. Sort it. Select the correct one. And now we have this change action applied to any work that we're doing right now. What we're going to do is we're going to take this assembly and open it in Katia V5 simply by going to our compass and selecting the icon for Katia V5. Once Katia V5 loads up, we see that at the top level we see our assembly and then we also see the, the icon that we're used to seeing for the top level of, a, of an assembly in 3D Experience because it knows that it's a 3D Experience part because Katia V5 is now connected. If we take a look at the bottom right of the screen, we see that little construction hat that denotes it as a change action. So what this is saying is that any work that we're doing in V5 now, 3D Experience knows that this is getting applied to that change action. So these two interfaces are connected and communicating. So we go find the bracket that we want to replace. So we go and select replace and it gives us the option to search our 3D experience database as well as our file database or loaded documents. We'll go and search in 3D experience, we'll find the bracket we want to replace it with, and then instantiate that change. And we'll go and do it to the second bracket. Go to replace, 3D experience, search again. For hook and then choose the part select OK and then choose not to instantiate it on all of the other brackets we just want it on these two so now when we go and save it this is actually committing it directly to the 3d experience database so now we're going to see how v5 data works within 3d experience so the way that this is handled is that if you are designing in v5 from 3d experience data if you bring in, say, an assembly that has both 3D Experience and V5 data in it, your V5 data, stuff that was created in V5, will be rich content, meaning that you can go into the tree in your Katia V5 and edit it and change it and make updates. Whereas the 3D Experience data, when opening it in V5, it's going to come in, your geometry is still going to come in, but it's all going to be dead. Now the same goes vice versa. You can, any data that's authored in V5 and saved in the 3D experience, you can load up and open in your 3D experience, as well as simulation apps, validation apps, design reviews, etc. It's just gonna, your geometry is just gonna be dead. However, that doesn't mean that you can't use your geometry in a simulation, and we're gonna see that now. So here we have our simulation model, our model setup for simulation. And right now we're just going to go into BI Essentials. It's basically just an information tool that color codes everything. And right now we're filtering out 3D Experience parts and Katia V5 parts. So here we can see that example where we're in 3D Experience and we have both V5 
and 3D Experience parts working together in the same environment in this simulation. And as you can see, we can go ahead and set up this simulation with our Katia V5 parts in conjunction with our 3D Experience parts as if they were working together seamlessly. So here we're going through and just setting up our simulation, setting up our mesh, setting up our bolts. Then also setting up how we want to visualize this simulation once it's run. We want to make sure anything that's obstructing our view is out of the way. Setting up our point of inertias, our forces, uh, our gravity. We set up a clamp surface because it's going to be rigid. Ensure our gravity factor is correct. And take a look at the force load on the bolts, ensure that's correct. Then finally take a look at our results. And we see our new geometry can not only be simulated and analyzed, but it can also be replayed kinetically. So now we're going to be talking about working with SOLIDWORKS in 3D Experience. This works the same way as CATIA V5 in 3D Experience in that SOLIDWORKS acts as the CAD house and 3D Experience still acts as your PDM PLM. We're going to see in this example while working with a medical device that you can even use your current legacy PDM along with SOLIDWORKS and 3D Experience. So here we see our PDM view where we go through and search for our medical device assembly top level. Then we go and choose to open that, and we open it up in SOLIDWORKS. Now if we notice, as we open this up, on the right side of our screen, we have a window pane for 3D Experience. And in this pane, we have our entire tree and or assembly structure. We're going to go to this command that looks like a fit all in command. It's actually Explorer and Web. And what this is going to do is it's going to open up our 3D Experience web apps. And here we have the same assembly, all of our metadata within 3D Experience. So we can see all of the different instances of this assembly and get a summary of that. Look at that metadata. Look at the related parts. In viewing those parts, we see the metadata within there. We can also check the EBOM. Here we see a dynamic graphical view of our assembly and our sub-assemblies of our medical device. And here we can see that we can fly out and see certain sub-assemblies, go into a part, view the information on that part or sub-assembly, go back to our top level. We can check our device master record. This is essentially where we compile all of the instructions, drawings, and other records that's used to produce this product. And here we can view all those documents and all that data in real time, as well as filter it by either EBOM, MBOM, title, type, state, collaborative policy, or even revision. So here we're going to choose our type to be just our SOLIDWORKS assembly instance. So now it's filtering out by all of our SOLIDWORKS parts specifically. Now we're going to go back into SOLIDWORKS and choose to check out a certain part that we want to modify. We're going to check out this part directly from our 3D Experience window pane. So now that we've checked out this assembly and this subpart, we're going to go and open the subpart in our authoring window. We want to take this user pattern and adjust the gap in between them. So we're going to adjust it from 4 mils to 7 mils. And we're going to save it. It's letting us know that there's an older version available and that we're prompting that we want to rebuild it and instantiate this change. And we're going to instantiate this change into our PDM. It won't be saved into 3D Experience until we check it in. 
So right now we have these changes done, but they aren't committed to our 3D Experience database. Only until we check in are our modifications committed to the 3D Experience database. So now we'll check in the entire assembly and commit that to the database with some comments. Parts made in 3D Experience, SolidWorks, and Katia, they can all be opened up in their own respective app with data from the other apps. That data will just be dead. And now going back into our web apps, we check our top level SOLIDWORKS assembly and then go down into the part we modified, check into device master record, we can go into this record and now see once we filter out by SOLIDWORKS assembly instances, we can now see our modified part and the note that we put in there saying new grid instance.